Coming up on this edition of ATV News. I don't think I would have lived here. We'll show you what's so tough about living on campus this year. Have a safe race! We'll show you how this early morning bike ride can get you bragging rights. This engine is smoking. We'll tell you why that's normal for the planes you heard all weekend. It's been raining off and on in Logan. I'll show you whether those clouds will stick around or yield to blue skies. You know the football team scored 78 points on Saturday, but do you know the last year they scored that many points? All that and more, this is ATV News. kick out of bounds, the kickoff out of bounds. Intercepted, intercepted, and this is going all the way back for a touchdown. Football team is riding high after their game against Idaho State on Saturday. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Zahari Nasir from ATV Sports. That was Ike Larson with the first of two interceptions returned for touchdowns from a historic game against Idaho State this weekend. That one was part of a four- Four point second quarter for the Aggies. We've got plenty more on the game coming up later, but for now, I'll send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Zahara. I'm Ryan Morrison. And I'm Katie White. You probably heard them over the weekend. Two World War II bombers flew in and out of Logan Airport. That's a B-25 bomber, and that smoke is normal with its radial engine. The plane is called Made in the Shade, and the nose art model came out from Louisiana. My first time seeing the plane done in 20 years. I posed for it 20 years ago, and uh, it's just spectacular. It's, it's perfect. People paid up to $800 to take an hour ride on the B-17 bomber. It only fits three people and runs for four hours. Think of how tired you'd be after driving 200 miles. What if you did that on your bike? Three, two, one. Have a safe race! Riders from 40 states and five countries competed in Loda just Saturday. 2,000 cyclists took off from Logan on their way to Jackson Hole. They get 14 it's, it's hours personal, to do it. It's personal, it's social, the training is very social. You're competing mostly with yourself, um, which is a great challenge and accomplishment. There are more than 600 volunteers helping. Some ride motorcycles to follow the racers. Ham radio operators follow them too. The fastest time of the race was 8 hours, 42 minutes, and 53 seconds. Cache Valley is raising awareness for suicide prevention through the Ignite the Light campaign. Give it up, kiss it up, and give it a bow. Tia B. Stokes spoke to Cache Valley residents at Ignite the Light on Saturday. Tia is a mother of five and a leukemia survivor. People say they also enjoyed the bouncy houses and food trucks at the event. Another highlight of the evening was the National Parks Band. You get to watch the National Parks, which I know they're having a concert next so weekend in Salt Lake, and I that one you do have to pay for, but this one you don't. The National Parks finished the night with an energetic performance to help raise suicide awareness. This week, we have a chance to challenge Utah State in the annual blood battle. These students donating blood are part of the annual blood battle between Utah State and Weber State. USU has dominated the blood battle, winning nearly every year since it began in 2003. Students say the rivalry is fun, but it isn't what motivates them to donate blood. I'm donating blood because I have more than enough and someone else could use it. I like to think it's competitive. I've never seen this many people sitting in line for a blood drive. <laughs> With music blasting, Big Blue visited the TSC to entertain donors while they gave their blood. The Red Cross says while Utah State is the reigning champ, Weaver State has been campaigning hard to challenge for the title this year. How noisy are your neighbors? Anna Johnson shows you what students at USU's Merrill Hall are putting up with and how long it may stick around. Banging and clinging and drilling. Life at Merrill Hall is noisier this fall. We're almost completely surrounded by construction. Residents here say they knew about the construction, but didn't know it would be like this. Outside our doors, 
like just completely wrapped around our building. We didn't find out until we were buying parking passes that the parking lot was going to be taken up by the construction site. The nearest parking spot to this door used to be about where that shed is. Now you'll have to walk through this tunnel to park your car here on the other side of the highway. This project was started when we got funds and started planning for the new building for Huntsman School students. And then as part of that, it was more efficient to go ahead and redevelop the whole area. A new parking structure, student housing with 90 additional beds, and the Kem and Carolyn Gardner Learning and Leadership Building will fill the space from these old dorms crews tore down this summer. Whenever there's constructions, there is noise and impacts for the people around it, so they are going to experience that over the next year. DeRito says the university expects to complete the projects in mid to late 2025. Having the construction kind of takes away a lot of my motivation for living here. Erickson says she'll graduate before the noise ends, but if she had to choose where to live next year. Honestly, if I would have known that, I don't think I would have lived here. Anna Johnson. ATV News. The other two construction projects on campus are the Mehdi Haravi Global Teaching and Learning Center and the local Logan Institute of Religion. Brigham City shut down their town. Main Street was closed off for vendors, a beer contest, and food. Over 70,000 people attended Teach Day. I've grown up here in Brigham City. Uh, for most of my life and, and it's it's just a fun time to get together. There's a lot of people but there's just so much good that goes on and, and it brings everybody together so I, that's why I really enjoy it. Gregory says that Peach Days has one of the largest car shows in the state with over 900 entries. Out in this morning and it was driving down the freeway and I was like oh we're going to the car show today so we can go see that cute Jeep. <laughs> I think it's awesome because it's like a Jeep, but then they built a wood interior over the top of it. I think it's very like creative. I think it's so cool. Peach Days ran all week. It's after it's the week after Labor Day every year. I've been to I've only been to Peach Days once before. How about you guys? Well, I've never been to Peach Days, but my favorite peaches are part of a pie. I haven't been, but my grandma brings home their peaches every year. And coming up. Shortly before winter time, we're going to get a huge amount, like bigger than usual amount of meat. We'll show you why Muslims in the Logan community have been traveling more than 82 miles to buy this meat. There's no planet B. We'll tell you why Utah State students are going into other people's backyards to pick fruit. Fall is in the air, but those summer temperatures are still hanging on. The current temperature is 69 degrees. Surplus store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State. I can't help but think of forever when I think of you. In dreams and in love, there are no impossible. If I know what love is, it is because of you. You are my heart, my life, my one and only thought. I know, but I'm falling in love with you. Beth's Bistro, The Junction.
Noni's Cafe. USU Dining Services. Love, you can buy. Welcome to ATV Weather, I'm Joe Cooney. Starting off with our national radar, we can see across the Intermountain West patchy clouds which then serve to patchy rain. Uh, then going into the southwest and eventually over to the south, we see more contiguous bands of rain taking us across the country. Over in the east coast, we see more of that patchy rain, but we are also tracking Hurricane Lee. This graphic here shows the probability of high winds over about 40 miles an hour over the next few days. So as that hurricane moves uh, near Miami northwards, uh, we expect to see that purple band of high chances of heavy winds uh, going up the east coast, more so skirting the northeast, and then moving in towards Canada and back out into the ocean. So the purples are the heavy high winds, and the green is a lower chance of those heavy winds. Coming back over to Utah, let's go to our state radar, and we can see that patchy clouds, cloud cover, and those patchy storms we saw this morning, especially over the eastern half of the Wasatch Front and up into Logan, like we saw earlier. Going into our seven-day forecast, we can see that today that rain is here and the high is around 78 degrees, but going into the rest of the week and the weekend, those clouds we think will part and give us some sunny skies. With high temperatures, in the high 70s to low 80s and low temperatures in the low 50s to high 40s. Going into next week, we see that those clouds might be coming back and giving us a little more spattered showers. High temperatures are still in the low 80s and even getting up to 75, a bit cooler next week. Now let's go back to Katie at the desk because you're all caught up on weather. Thanks, Joe. Could the food you eat be more or less authentic? Zahar Nasir shows you what Muslims in the Logan community are doing to make sure the meat products they are eating are halal. Cut right in front of you, this is fresh halal meat at a market in Salt Lake City. It is also not very common in Logan because there isn't a halal store to sell it fresh for the residents. There is no halal market here, so I searched up on Google and I said there was one shop, but then yesterday when I went to the mosque, it turned out that the store is closed. The meat is tender and freshly restocked every three days. Some Logan residents say this halal meat is worth the one hour drive to Salt Lake City. Several times I've gone down to Salt Lake. Even though we have some options here, they're frozen, they're very expensive, and they don't taste good. How about all the lake? Halal store owners in Salt Lake County say Logan residents buy meat from them frequently. A lot of customers, they come from Logan and um, most of the time they come in the weekend that when they need like uh, halal meat, they come here to my store. They shop equipment here and they love the, the meat. It's because it's a fresh, tender meat. Halal logo is one we see on many foods meant to assure the buyer the product being sold is in compliance with Islamic laws. But what exactly is considered halal food in the Islamic religion? No alcohol, no pig's product or pig's meat. And for the meat we eat, it just have to be processed according to the Islamic law. This means vegetables are completely halal. I have some pepper. Asifa has plenty in her fridge, but she says eating this repeatedly can be tasteless. We can only eat vegetables so many times, you know. If there's halal burgers or stuff like that, it'll be greatly appreciated. I also decided to buy some halal meat from Salt Lake City to take back to Logan with me. But unlike myself, most Logan residents say they prefer buying it in bulk so they can always have some halal meat stocked at home. We go and get a big box of halal chicken or halal beef. We bring it back home and we have deep freeze where, where we store the meat for a longer time because we cannot drive every day to Salt Lake. While she prepares some of the last halal frozen chicken her mom sent her, Asifa hopes Logan can bring in some fresh halal meat options soon for the Muslim community that live there. Zahar Nasir, ATV News. A few of the halal shop owners in Salt Lake County say they might consider opening a shop in Logan someday. Employees and volunteers at USC Sustainability pay for to donate and they run the employment. Julia Gucci shows us more of what they do and why they do. With doing small acts like harvesting produce, also known as gleaning, the Utah State Sustainability Student Leads say you can help make a difference in preserving Cache Valley. There's no planet B. I like those stickers. I like that saying, uh, this is our earth, this is our home. We only have one. 
and we all share it, so might as well take care of it. The gleaning team went to two different Logan residents' backyards to harvest fruit off their trees on Monday. From July to October, the Utah State Gleaning Team harvests produce such as these pears that might otherwise go to waste. We get to pick fruits and vegetables, which I think is like a great break from classes or jobs or any other responsibilities that you might have. You also get to bring home some of the produce you harvest so you can enjoy the literal fruits of your labor. People want to be more sustainable, but they don't really know how. And they don't really have that push to go do it. So I think that there's, when there's a great organization like this and it's easy to get involved, I think it's, it'll be really great if people can, can get on board. And the members at Utah State Sustainability say they can never have too many volunteers, so they are always looking for more people willing to help. Julia Gutke, ATV News. You can learn more about gleaning and volunteering with USU Sustainability through our Facebook page. You know, I think that's a really great opportunity for Logan residents to be able to get fresh produce, but let's talk about the sustainability that the Aggies had last Saturday. Yes, that was definitely one of the most historic games for Utah State, but we'll talk about that later in spot. For now, coming up. <laughs> what a pass there from Mountain Crane. Coming up, we'll show you the results of this game. It's kind of made for a movie, right? After sports, I'll take you to the Mural Kazir Library to see what Cache Valley legend made his way into the Aggie family. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. For more than 100 years, American Humane has been on the front lines protecting animals in times of crisis. From Pearl Harbor to 9-11, the California wildfires, and the coronavirus pandemic. American Humane Rescue has provided life-saving assistance for animals in virtually every major national disaster. If you're anything like me, your pets mean the world to you. And if disaster strikes, you want to keep them safe. To prepare for an oncoming disaster, ensure your pet has secure and up-to-date identification. And if you must evacuate, remember to take your disaster preparedness kit with you. To learn more about disaster planning and how to keep your best friends safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. With an attendance of over 10,033 people, Maverick Stadium was filled with supporters and fans during a historic game against Idaho State University on Saturday. Welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Zahar Nasir. It was the night before the game and all around the quad, the students had gathered to come out with the stars. With music blasting, students danced the night away under the light of the old main tower at Camp Out on the Quad. They set up tents, hammocks, and even tended campfires to celebrate their return to campus and prepare for USU's home football open against Idaho State the next day. Now for the game we have been anxiously waiting for. The Aggies gathered to support USU's football team through their biggest win since 1919. The Aggies got together for a quick huddle here to boost their morale right before the beginning of the game. 
USU's Robert Briggs scored the first touchdown of the game for the Aggies in the first quarter with this 58-yard run. Not long after, Idaho State's quarterback tried to pass the ball to the Bengals, but Utah State's I like and said, not today, snagged the ball and took it back 47 yards, scoring another touchdown for the Aggies. Look at that celebration there. <laughs> Utah State's Devon Booth ran 41 yards, scoring this touchdown for the Aggies, his second of the game. The Aggies continued dominating and scoring touchdowns like this, finishing the quarter of the game 37 points ahead of the Bengals. In the fourth quarter, Utah State's Jaden Franco intercepted this pass for a 75-yard run, scoring the last touchdown for the Aggies. In the end, Utah State won by a landslide against Idaho State with a final score of 78 to 28. That's the fourth most points the Utah State has scored in football since a game against Idaho State in 1919. Truly a historic game. And now in high school football, the Skyview Bobcats played against the Ridgeline Riverhawks Friday. The game started neck and neck, but then Ridgeline stepped it up when Aaron Young scored a 40-yard field goal with this kick that is going to be coming up. This score put his team in the lead with two points. But within two minutes remaining in the third quarter, Skyview's is Eason Ballard intercepted and brought the ball back 29 yards with a pass from Bervin Egbert putting more points on the board for the Bobcats. Egbert scored a total of two touchdowns in this game. In the fourth quarter, Ridgeline's Natale fired back with a three-yard touchdown pass to Graham Livingston, adding even more points to the Ridgeline total with that kick that you just saw there, bringing in an extra point from Aaron Young. Within nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter of the game, Ridgeline Egbert ran for a 33-yard, gaining more points for his team with his second touchdown. He also earned extra four points in his two conventional runs. Great presses here by Ridgeland quarterback Nate Dell to receive a Graham Livingston who gets the ball and is off but doesn't get too far away with it. All in all, the defense was tight for both the teams but Sky took the win. In the end with a score of 23-22. to 22. The Bobcats will be hosting Bear River next Friday. A live band performed as the Mountain Crest Mustangs went head-on against the Green Canyon Wolves on Friday. Both teams were struggling to get a touchdown in the first quarter, but they ended up with Mountain Crest scoring their first touchdown one minute before the halftime, scoring the first points for this game. Mountain Crest's Casey Kraft threw a 35-yard touchdown pass to Wilde Volker, followed by more points from Jaren's kick that put them in the lead with seven points. The Mustangs continued leading for most of the third quarter with 14 points ahead of the Wolves. Nice defense there, but the Green Canyons Clayton tried to make a run for some points, but was knocked down by Mountain Crest Carter Agent, one of his seven tackles in the game. Mountain Crest won in the end, 14 to 10. In women's volleyball, Utah State lost two matches, one Thursday and another Friday, but came back harder than ever for their weekend match. The Aggies won against the Panthers 3-0 in Texas Saturday morning with three aces. Uni was leading with a 12-10 point lead in the third set, but the Aggies came out with a win in the end. The Aggies also received four votes in the latest American Volleyball Coaches Association that placed them in the 36th rank in the nation. They will be facing Utah Valley University in RM tomorrow evening. And in women's tennis, Utah State opened its fall campaign Friday at a tournament in Texas. They competed against seven teams, including Texas State and Abilene Christian. In women's soccer, Utah State lost to Arizona State 1-0 on Sunday. They will be back on the pitch Saturday playing against BYU during a home game at the Chuck and Gloria Belfield. USU senior wide receiver Terrell Vaughn is on the tear right now. We're only two games in, but Vaughn could be on his way to a historic season. Vaughn leads the nation in total receptions ahead of other receivers who have played one more game than him. At 23 receptions, Vaughn is on track to end the season with 149. That's 47 more than the USU single season record set by Devin Tompkins in 2021. 
Vaughn has 79 career receptions, which is 100 away from breaking the career reception record set by Kevin Robinson in 2007. Once again, we're only two games into the season, but up to this point, late in season, Vaughn only had five receptions, and that was in three games. We'll keep you updated on his progress throughout the season. And now you're all caught up on the sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Zahara. Have you ever heard the story of Old Ephraim? I went to the Merrill Kazir Library to find out more about this Cache Valley legend. And I think it's just a great story to begin with. Fact. This is in the 1920s. The Bear River Range is a lot wilder than it is today in a lot of ways, and I think that uh, appeals to people. Or fiction. Why the story is still so popular today. Old Ephraim is a Cache Valley legend. Uh, just educate people a little bit more, maybe who aren't from Cache Valley, who didn't grow up with the story. And just as all good legends have done, this one has grown. Frank Clark is, uh, has been trapping this bear for nine years. Frank Clark arrived in Logan Canyon on July 13, 1911, where he was part owner of the Ward Clark Sheep Company. In his first summer alone, Clark had counted a total of 154 sheep killed by bears, finally setting out to do something about it in 1914. It's kind of made for a movie, right? This 20-gauge shotgun is much different than the 25-35 carbine rifle that Clark used. Experts recommend a much larger gun for bears. Clark said he took five shots before he turned and ran from Old Ephraim because he was getting ready to chase him. In one final act of desperation, Clark turned around and took one final shot. He, he fires the last bullet into his head, stopping him in his tracks. Old Ephraim's skull eventually made its way to the Smithsonian thanks to some local Boy Scouts. Several years later, Senator Orrin Hatch brought it back to USU. Um, this is Ephraim's skull. Uh, he's an old bear who used to kill sheep. I've never actually seen a bear jaw skull, so it's pretty cool. Where it has stayed on permanent loan since 1978. The exhibit on Old Ephraim will run through September 25th. For more about the exhibit, check out our Facebook page. You know, in his account, Frank Clark actually said that uh, Ephraim was nearly 10 feet tall, but evidence from his skull actually suggests that he was closer to 7 half feet. Oh wow, that is much taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does make more sense for grizzly bears too. Definitely. Thank you for watching this edition of ATV News. You can find this and other editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave you with some shots of the Peach Day festivities. Have a great week, Cash Valley. <laughs> Look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here.